All right, anything else on curriculum? All right, so we've already covered the school start time committee. So we'll move on to nominations and elections for the Duchess Bosey's board. It's in our packet, right? All right, so there's a um, memo from Duchess Bosey's that uh, it's time to start thinking about nominating board members or people to run for the BOCES board uh, and the meeting annual meeting is on April 9th um, that's the uh, meeting where nom nominees can attend the meeting mm. and the elections on April 26th so um, as has been past practice we would have to I believe that would be our regularly scheduled board meeting for, mm -hmm. for once. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we won't have to have a special meeting to vote on the Rosie's board, but um, so that's good. Um, so April 26th, we'll be voting on the uh, candidates for Rosie's board. Anything else on that, Lisa? Um, since there's going to be an open seat this year without a, a, an incumbent uh, seeking another term, um, do we want to? try to canvas our community and see if there's somebody within Rhinebeck who would be interested in serving. You know, the perennial issue is people don't want to run if there's an incumbent, but I don't know how often there's an open seat on the BOCES board, but there's certainly parents whose children are in the BOCES program and, you know, maybe really that's good, yeah. the place to start looking for mm -hmm. people who might have an interest in, you know, being involved. Yeah. In, on behalf of their children, on behalf of the other children in the district, on in serving. It's a really good idea. So, can I ask the? I know you guys are busy, the communications committee, but maybe <laughs> you can put together something to pass the word to our yeah, parents that sure. there's yeah. people, you know, there's a seat available. All right, make a note. All right, anything else on that? All right, so we'll move on to the 2016-17 budget development. Okay, not going to spend a whole lot of time on this because there really hasn't been too many changes as of right now. But in your, before you, what I did was put together some the changes that have occurred in this particular draft. And there wasn't a whole lot of changes. Uh, to give you an example on that first page there, you'll see them all in there being uh, with um, uh, really the salaries of the Rhinebeck Administration uh, Association uh, with the passing of their contract last time I have put them into the budget but you'll see at the bottom at the very bottom there's one for health insurance the money was budgeted <laughs> so I took the money I put aside to it so uh, so this is about an increase of 70000 but I had budgeted $75,000 in health insurance to cover that cost. So that was uh, a little bit more than uh, neutral there. Um, the next, uh, so those were the increases. So those are the only increases there. Uh, the second part of it at the bottom are the deletions. Now, most of these deletions go to BOCES services. I have received now all the the BOCES cost uh, with their true values. I went through and made some adjustments to that. Uh, and so you can see that there's about, oh, I'm gonna say 15 to $18,000 worth of BOCES services that was cut out. Uh, but there, another big one in there is uh, $35,000 for the teacher retirement system, a reduction. Uh, they set their rate um, last week. I can't remember off the top of my head what that rate is. Uh, I think. It was 11.72 percent, and I had budgeted 12 percent, so a slight reduction there. So altogether, this uh, this second draft went down by 50, a little over 56 thousand uh, dollars. Our budget to budget is 3.84 percent, and the proposed tax levy is 5.31 percent. Let's move on from there because I'll explain some of this stuff as we go on to the next ones. It'll start making a little bit more sense as to how these numbers changed. And what we have with the next set here is the, uh, the, the tax levy limit. Uh, we computed that. Nothing changes on the first page. That all remains the same. That, that's, nothing's changed there at all. 
What has changed on the second page is the capital local expenditures, uh, actually that amount, and uh, that's actually increased, which actually helps increase our, uh, our maximum allowable tax levy. Uh, so I don't remember exactly what it was last time. I think it was 1.12%. Uh, our tax levy limit now is going up to 1.26% for a $335,000 uh, increase to the tax levy. Um, so we picked up some extra revenue on that end of it all, so that was nice. So let's go over to the next page and I'll just stop you there. Yep, yeah, certainly. The tax levy cap is still well below 2%, yeah. percent, oh, which is the common. Yeah understanding of what the tax cap is. And you got to remember our growth in this community is 1.13 percent. If we didn't have that growth, you're looking right. you know, <laughs> 0 0.12, 0 0.13 down in that range. So um, so that is at least one helpful bit. Um, as, we, as we go on to the, uh, the next section, which is the, the revenues, uh, it's just a two-pager here. And I, I didn't make any changes here except in the tax levy to balance everything. And I went up to 5.31. But if we go to the second page with the state aid here, um, this is based on the state aid run that was provided to us. Okay? Uh, I got the gov another. The governor's, the, governor's, the governor's state aid. Actually, though, um, I think it's from Joe's. Uh, the superintendent's council, they are able to give me a much better one where it actually broke it down into, into the various codes. I was able to break it down a little bit more than I typically can. Um, and one of the things that we see here, it's, it's a reduction of $165,000 over the previous year. And it's really all related around the excess cost aid. I strictly put it in exactly off it came off the state aid run. And that's A3101B excess cost aid. It's only 124000 This is the money we received back for our special ed students um, that are above and beyond our basic contribution. We know this number is wrong, but I haven't had the time to really, really figure it out. What's I'm, the order of magnitude that you think it's off? It, it could be off by hundred to $200,000 here. That we would plus that or minus would be entitled to it, more? More. Oh, okay. More. Um, uh, so I have Christine in my office, our treasurer, working on this with me to really get really what a firm number is for that because the number they get is just a number, but there are specific formulas that we're going to work out based on our kids that are in the program that we know about that the state doesn't know about yet, mm -hmm. but we don't, and they're there. So we'll be coming through and we'll be making that change, but I believe that we're looking anywhere from a hundred to two hundred thousand dollar increase there and maybe even potentially more um, due to increased enrollment in the special ed program. Um, Tom, can I just ask this question? Yeah. Is there anyone at the state that you can consult with about that number? I mean, or is that, I mean, I know that sounds so ridiculous to think that uh, the state might provide <laughs> us with some clarity on the amount of aid we receive for certain codes. But yeah, that's is a that, good question. There There's no real, to, real office there you can call. Um, but I know that Christine has been in, uh, in contact with what's called the stack unit, mm -hmm. uh, that they handle all the special ed students and all that. It's called a stack. Um, I, I know she's been in contact with them, um, but I think what I can do is get some more poignant, you know, how are these numbers determined in the state aid run versus what we actually receive? Because there are two different things altogether. Yeah. And no, I, and I understand and, 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 you know, that. And it, it just hard. It, I know you've done a terrific, you know, you have years of experience <clears throat> doing it. But when this number is so critical for our budget. It, it is, yeah. yeah. It, it certainly is. And that's why I want to be conservative. I don't want to go too high out there and create false hopes. Um, I really want to get a true figure as to what we should be expecting next year. Mm -hmm. I, you know, and that's the one thing about the whole stack process. It happens over multiple years. So we're still going in and filing for additional monies and things of that nature, even years after the fact. When we find something, like all of a sudden comes up, we had one come up the other day, and we realized that they never claimed for the summer transportation for one student. Mm -hmm. Well, we put in that claim then for it, you know. Mm -hmm. So that's the other thing now with Christine uh, really taking over for uh, 
a contractor who's basically retiring now, so Christina's taken on this additional uh, duty, and uh, she's going back through and, and, and learning it, and we're, and, uh, and we're going back to look to see what we think are, huh, let's go back, and, and we've been able to go back and we're recouping some additional money. They're not mm -hmm. great amounts of money, right. but every little bit's counting. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, and we're also doing that on the Medicaid side too. Mm -hmm. yeah, we're, we're doing that too. That, that's that's a lot of work for so little money. <laughs> uh, but when we get to the bottom here, we're looking at a budget that's 3.84 percent budget to budget increase. Okay, um, but we are seeing a tax increase of of. 5.31%, uh, so that's way above there. So we're over a million dollars right now uh, with a gap. Um, and I think that gap is really under a million dollars, but how much under is yet to be determined yet. Mm -hmm. um, and plus we hope that we get some more positive news on the state aid side. Um, but at this time we don't, we don't even know when to expect another state aid run. Right. Who knows how the politics up there are going to be yeah. and how long it's going to be before we see something else and how much influence is up there. Right. And hopefully we'll see more monies come to the district and to all schools. Like you say, they do have a, they have a, they have an excessive fund balance, probably more than the 4% that we're allowed to have. <laughs> <laughs> we should. Um. I'm not saying the time has come, but I think that the time will shortly be coming, um, maybe as soon as the next meeting, where we are going to have to start looking at some scenarios for how to deal with the gap that we're facing. You know, one of the things, obviously, that you're going to be looking at are the, the cuts that um, the administration has asked of the principals and department heads, as we talked about earlier in the meeting. Um, but I think that you might start thinking about how to put together some scenarios, potential scenarios, for us to consider in terms of how we manage this gap. You know, cuts are only one of the potential ways of dealing with this. And you know, as you say, we don't know what the legislature's proposal is going to be. Um, although we can sort of postulate certain possibilities, like gap elimination yep. adjustment being eliminated entirely, things of that nature. Those, I think we're going to need to soon start seeing those kinds of scenarios laid out for us so that we can make some decisions about what we're going to do. And if necessary, we can start educating and reaching out to the community about the things that we may need feel we may feel that we need to do to responsibly mm -hmm. deal with the situation. Mm -hmm. I do not want this to be a crazy rush at the end mm -hmm. when you know at the time when we have to get a budget out, um, one of the reasons why we're starting this so early, we've been starting it so early for several years now, is to try to get ahead of the process as much as possible. And since we've known this was going to be a difficult budget year for some time. I'd like mm -hmm. us to have as much time as possible to grapple with that. So I would hope you be starting to think along those lines and start to put some stuff together for us. You could. Well, one thing I would like to ask you to think about, and that is class sizes. You know, what is the real, true class size we should have? Like say, you know, K through two has been said, you know, lower the class size, the better you are, but once you get to third grade, yeah, size doesn't matter as much. Uh, but we've continued with, if it has four sections, we continue with four sections no matter what. You may have to take a look at that and say, hmm, that's not going to be the case. When we get to third grade, it's okay to have 25 in a class. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, kind of some direction that way. Uh, I know one thing that happened uh, that I'm working on right now, and I believe it's very complicated, and I hate to do this, but it's something we're going to have to do every year. But remember last year in sixth grade, we cut them back to four sections. Okay. And it was, right, we had less than 80 kids in a class, and there's no class coming up right now that has more than 80 kids in the class. So mm -hmm. even if you have four sections, that's only 20 kids in a class. Mm -hmm. So we cut back to four sections. 
okay? And what happened is those sixth grade teachers who've now had one additional period actually ended up teaching other classes, either in the high school or the middle school, where they'd be. Well, now we're gonna have that sixth grader now go up to seventh grade. Mm -hmm. Currently now five scheduled sections. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll have to look to see if that four scheduled sections and all the permutations that occur mm -hmm. because of that. It gets well, a little bit more difficult as we, <laughs> as we go up and then every but, year afterwards. It, but that's exactly my point. In order for us to make those determinations, we need to know what the impact of them is. Mm -hmm. So if you can give us the, oh, the financial scenarios, that will help to inform our discussion as to whether that's something that we should be Consider directing to be done. Yeah. Okay. We can put various, schedule, various scenarios together and what it means. Okay. Yeah, and um, I, I think one of those scenarios from my standpoint would be what would the impact be of going for an override, you know, piercing the tax cap at, you know, maybe 2%, maybe mm -hmm. what would, I mean, I'm trying to do the math here, what, a, what would 2% would give us an extra uh, significant amount of money. And, uh, <laughs> they figure that one out yeah. in your head, you'll do that at So, I, you know, I think that, um, uh, for me, and I know Lisa, you've said for a while we should be talking to our yeah. community about it. I mean, we have a lot of support in our community for all the programs we want. In fact, many of the programs, we, we have so many different programs, so many sports, so many extracurricular activities, because parents and kids come to us and say they want them. Right, exactly. So we really do need to communicate to parents about if you want this kind of thing, we can't do it at a 1.25% increase this year in our budget, in our tax revenue. So I would, I would request that mm -hmm. you and Joe come up with some scenarios around piercing the budget. And, and I'm just picking two because people seem to think of two as the tax cap, mm -hmm. but I'm not stuck. I mean, there, it mm -hmm. should be grounded in real numbers that right. impact the the actual budget in the program, but mm -hmm. that might be a, a number to think about. Yeah, uh, you know, one of the things that I've been thinking about too, and I, and I may have mentioned to some people or, or may not, but I know I've spoken to Joe about it, and I'll, I'll, I'm going to put something together, and what it is is since we began this tax cap, and you know, even though probably on average over that entire time it's probably been around 2% maybe, you know, maybe even a little bit less, but because of all the growth that's occurred in our community, the taxpayer hasn't seen that tax. Right, right. I mean, last it's year, spread out. I mean, it's, yeah. it's been spread out. So you're theoretically, even though it's off a little bit, that your tax bill should only really be going up by the CPI. I mean, next year, if you look at it, it should only go up 0 0.12 because you have that 1.13% of additional new property out right. in our district that's gonna pick up the rest of that bill. So next year, taxpayers are only looking at a 0.12% increase. Mm -hmm. Now that's something that's been very different in the past, and there's a real big difference because we've always given the tax levy increase, not the tax rate increase. Mm -hmm. The right. tax rate increase has been very different than the tax levy increase. So individual homeowners, unless they've expanded upon their properties mm -hmm. and increased the value of their property, really haven't seen their tax mm -hmm. bills go up too much right. over the past few years. And I think we need to make a point about that, that and yeah. communicate right. that. Yeah. Absolutely. That, you know, in reality, it, it really, for the school district to get back online is to take a one year, get us back in line, mm -hmm. and then we can move forward from there. Yeah, yeah. Right. So yeah, it's right. something to think about, uh, even, and we'll put some scenarios together. Yeah, yes. that'd be good. What you may feel comfortable with. Because yes. ultimately it's what you're comfortable with and what you're willing to, to put in front of your uh, the taxpayers mm -hmm. for approval. And like I said, you get one more chance after that too. So, right. still scary though. <laughs> I saw Laura first and then Diane. Um, I think that's a great idea, and um, I, I would say that when we go to the community, rather than just saying, well, you guys all want these programs, so this is what it's going to cost you, I think, you know, it's important for us to give them 
if you don't want to do this, then class sizes could increase. Then right. um, you know mm -hmm. teachers could be excess. They, I think we need to be able to give them a really holistic picture of what these numbers will do with mm -hmm. their kids' educations. Um, mm -hmm. You know, there are going to be a whole bunch of people who don't want more taxes, right? We know that. Yeah. Um, so if we can sort of outline what it really means, so it's not this sort of high-level budgeting conversation that most people glaze over about, that we really bring it down to layman's terms. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Excellent. Diane? Um, I think that's a great idea. Um, I just have to be careful about um, that, you know, if this doesn't happen, this will get cut, because that's when you get people saying, well, you should cut this instead, or, you know, <laughs> you, pit, you take yeah. groups against yeah. another, you know, get rid of the AP, get rid of the sports. Um, and you never want to see that happen. But you know, if people are okay with a two percent tax gap. That's what they've understand it to be. So asking to go to two percent, I don't right. know what those numbers would look like. But I, you know, I think that people could get behind that because everybody's been kind of okay with that for the last few years. So that you know, be interesting to see where the numbers fall on that. Um, I have a question if you could clarify. Um, so on the, um, I'm on the. Um, this page, but development page one, the uh, oh, okay. development. Okay. So you added the numbers in for the salaries based on the contract yeah. settlement. So the percentages look off to me, and I'm wondering if they're off because that's including salary and benefits, because those percentages aren't the you know aren't the increases that were. This is a two-year increase. Okay. It's a two-year. So that, I, I knew there was a reason. It's a two-year increase, and okay. just about everybody's having a longevity step too. And it's two years. Not everybody, but. So it's not benefits, but it's because we're. In, it's because you're two years. Because we're this budget. is a two-year, so. Okay, that makes sense. Because this year's budget's reflected of last year's right. salary. Right. Okay. Yep, that makes sense. Okay. All right. Anything else on the budget? I just want to add too that you know we have to be careful because we don't want to say we have to bust the cap or else this is going to happen because that could you know be a negative as far as you know electioneering kind of mm -hmm. thing also. So true. True. All right. Um, so we'll move on to good news. Yay, we need good news. Yes. Budget, <laughs> Lisa. Um, I have some good news to report uh, that came to me through the Rhinebeck Science Foundation. Um, it's actually news from um, Ms. Linenbroker, the library media specialist here at the middle school, high school. Um, the, um, there is a Flickr album for a collaborative art project that was done between Mrs. Yearwood's second graders and Mrs. Giles' drawing classes. Ms. Giles is one of the high school art teachers. Um, the second graders did a line drawing of a polar animal, and the high school students then used the Art Studio app on the library iPads to finish the picture. Um, I'm going to uh, just recite what the link to the Flickr album is, but I would also ask um, Tom if you could communicate with Steve and maybe this uh, link could be posted on the website so that people can look at it. You can forward that to I, me and that way we make sure we have it I, I, exactly right. I will do that. <laughs> um, the link for those who want to write it down is https colon slash slash flic dot kr slash s slash a h s k looks like q m w p seven j um, and I took a look at it, and it's pretty amazing. So, cool. and a big thank you to the Rhinebeck Science Foundation, which was, of course, instrumental in helping to provide those iPads to the library in the first place. Great. Other Great. good news? That's fine. Mm -hmm. Laura. Well, we three of us were were there at the Take a Stand, eighth grade Take a Stand project um, down the hall, and I have to say, in the three years that that project has been in the works. It continues to amaze. The writing is getting really great and those kids are being asked to think deeply about social issues and create some visual representation of, of that and its meaning to them. It's, it's really fantastic. I'm thrilled that Mrs. Kate can mm -hmm. keep that in her curriculum really, really given all the other restrictions we have. So it's pretty mm -hmm. fabulous. 
Diane? I have a couple. I had the opportunity to go to the Wizards first faculty mm -hmm. yes. game the other night, so and funny. what a, a, a great event. Uh, mm -hmm. Students from kindergarten all the way through seniors there, packed house, um, faculty giving it their all, um, and just you know, a great way to raise funds and enjoy the evening at the same time. Um, so it was just a, a really nice experience. Uh, a lot of people looking for tickets. It was sold out. So <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it was scalping in the street. Street. <laughs> yeah, it, was, uh, it was a hot ticket that night. Scalpers were out? Uh, mm -hmm. I Could know be. nothing about that. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people looking for tickets at the last minute. Facebook was lighting up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and um, uh, the other piece of business, I have uh, the opportunity to go to a lot of our basketball games and I had a parent um, from another school uh, mentioned to me what a, what a nice event we put on. You know, it's welcoming, we have a music playing, we have good announcers, and we have a halftime where kids can try to make a basket from half court. You know, <laughs> things that you don't see at other schools all the time, and mm -hmm. it was just nice to hear from another parent that, you know, this, you know, what a nice, you know, that we'd, um, sometimes you have the Spanish and the French club are making food or yeah. different, different things going on, so um, it was nice to hear that from my other parent. And then um, the middle school course concert, I think we didn't talk about that last time. Another great event from our music department. Um, it was a great evening. So. All right, other good news? Deirdre. Well, I just I saw the um, Take a Stand project on my way to the basketball game. And <laughs> 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 passed the Spanish and French club selling food. <laughs> And it was a great evening, and I also, I know that, I can't remember what it stands for, but Pat Sexton's group, ENTA, Enta. participated, mm -hmm. helped with that mm -hmm. Take a Stand project, and local artist Mimi yeah. Kaminsky, yeah. and, um, you know, all of that really is the whole thing from stepping in the door to the gym and back again was just a great, a, a wonderful environment. And worth every penny that we have to spend. <laughs> Indeed. 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 One more, thank you. Yes, the school had a pep rally last week that went yeah. mm -hmm. it was Heard well it was received success. by the students. So mm -hmm. nice that we're able to have events like yeah. that still during the day, even for a little bit of time. Very good. All right. Yay. Any good more news. good news? Lots of good news. That's a lot of good news mm -hmm. for yes. Yeah. yeah. All right, old business. No old business. Okay. Quick. <laughs> Public comment. Last girl standing. <laughs> Thanks for the RSF. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Other. All right. I have one item. Uh, at my place this evening, there was a uh, copy of a letter that went to Joe um, from Assemblyman Cahill requesting his input on key issues that will be impacting New York State education policy during the 2016 state legislative session. It's a very lengthy letter, so I won't read the whole thing, but um, anyway, he's asked for input from Joe, so uh, hopefully we'll hear more about that uh, in the yes. near future, and we're going to be meeting with the assemblyman next week, so. Yes, very good. Excellent. I, yeah. Go so I guess we could actually say under other, just to reiterate, that we had been at those meetings with Barrett and Assemblywoman Dee Dee Barrett and um, Senator Serino. Mm -hmm. And then Cahill's next. And, yes. you know, that's all we can do right now. I'm, I want to say that I think it's really great that we're all very committed to those meetings because it's mm -hmm. very important local lobbying. And we haven't always done that. I mean, as a group, we've done some sort of lobbying over the years, and this is a more recent thing to go to local offices. And, you know, I, I think we should just note to the public that we're doing all we can to advocate for the school district. Turning out in force. Yeah. It's, yes. it's powerful. We're all crammed around that table and, <laughs> yeah. and the education, you know, policy person is talking and we're talking with right. the, mm -hmm. it's really important. I think it's, it's great that we're all there and, and t toward that end I also want to ask uh, about our plan or can we get our plan together for Albany? Yes, right. Mm -hmm. Going to Albany? Right. Yeah. Well, um, what are the dates? Yeah, what are the dates? Yeah, the, 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 the NISBA? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. The lobbying day. Because we had talked about 
It's we, the end of this month. Because Joe was saying well, we could just go, go it's up that morning. It's actually March. It's just there instead right. of. Yeah, it's like March 1st or something. Is that right? I think it's oh, March 27th and 28th. Oh, okay. Okay, it's the end of March. Oh, it's yeah. the end of March. It's that late. Okay. Okay. No, it can't be. It's Easter. No. It's Easter. No. It's the budget. I feel like it's, it's March. March. Right, you're right. It's Easter weekend. It can't yeah. be that It's February 28th and 29th. I actually have it in my yeah. calendar. Well, maybe we could just uh, let, you know, when Joe gets back, if he could just send commit, We should commit to it, to yeah. Everyone yeah. check their yeah. calendars. And, and, yeah. and I think we had talked about this because there's one day of going for sort of training or something and right. another day that's the actual day there. Yeah. And we just go maybe we can just sort day. of figure out who's available for what. And uh, yeah. But I hope as many of us as possible yeah. can just be there. I, mm -hmm. I, I do think being there yeah. is important. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Something yeah, happens when people up. are there. I, I don't know. So legislators look yeah. away because they see us coming yeah, in. Exactly. We already talked to you. <laughs> I could um, I could be wrong. Like things could have shifted, but I do think that by now we're all like pretty experienced mm -hmm. lobbyers, yeah. and we're not particularly timid about speaking our minds. Yeah. So I would say my experience in the past, I don't, is that that training isn't yeah. necessarily that critical okay. if mm -hmm. you've at least, you know, gone and spoken yeah. with the legislator before. Yeah. A key yeah. thing is that they hand you a schedule at yeah. some point and that getting a handle of that schedule is mm -hmm. like when is everyone going to see the person? Yeah. Okay. That's important. But I but maybe I, I could, again I could be wrong, but I my past yeah. experience is that the training piece isn't right. May not right. We may so and the, the county school board association usually has a handle on when the uh, legislative appointments are, so mm -hmm. okay. they'll right. provide us with that information, so okay. we'll know when to be there. Um, Diane and I don't know if any. I think uh, Senator Trino has us all on her email list now, but she sent out um, something to all her constituents. It's true, yeah. About yeah, the so gap elimination. Yeah, so, that's right. I mean, she is reaching out, and great. you know, hopefully, people will read that it's and really you know, respond back to her. That's a way for our community to get involved and get back to her because she's 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 right. reaching out so people can get back she's to her. That, yeah. yeah, and she's being if responsive. I could, if I could just say, um, since I know that you're going to be reporting out the the for the RSF uh, about tonight's meeting, that you just emphasize the need for community involvement, including the RSF community, yeah. to be involved in you know reaching out to lawmakers and making their voices heard as well about how important adequate funding for the schools is this year. Thank you. <laughs> I'll talk to you tomorrow. <laughs> I don't know if you're done with are you done with that with the letter? I have an other another other. Uh, in response to my colleague Lisa's um, wonderful plea with us all along for communicating our intentions. I would like to communicate my intention to stand again for a uh, seat on the Board of Ed. Very good. Early Very good. enough yeah. to Thank you. let others know. Yes. And, um, <laughs> and I do hope we can actually try to find some time to reach out to people in our community who might have questions or interest in board service. Mm -hmm. um, I, I know that we both attended a, an event down at yeah, Bosey's yeah. when we were thinking about running and mm -hmm. if we could even in some more informal way make ourselves available to answer questions mm -hmm. um, and just kind of reach out to people who seem like they might be open to and interested in service that's a good mm -hmm. idea yeah and if we can get that um, information posted on the website yeah it, it would be great um, yeah. All right. okay. other other <laughs> more other all right seeing none we'll move on to action items is there anyone who would like to remove an item from the consent agenda? All right. We have a motion upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools to approve the consent agenda. So moved. By right, Deirdre. Second. By Lisa. All those in favor? It's unanimous. That motion passes. We have a motion upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools to accept two 2016 Exxon Mobil Fuels Educational Alliance grants in the amount of $500 each for Rhinebeck High School and Berkeley Middle School for the maintenance and support in the area of math and or science through the sponsorship of Mr. Richard Matthews and Rhinebeck Mobile. So moved. By Deirdre. Second. By Lisa. Any discussion? Lisa. Um, just once again, thank you to Rhinebeck Mobile and Mr. Matthews for their 
continue, continued gen generosity to the district. You know, this is a gift that we've seen every year for quite a number of years, and it's important for us to acknowledge how important these gifts are and to thank the sponsors of those gifts. Okay. All those in favor? That's unanimous. That motion passes. We have a motion upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools to approve the selection of Man's Search for Meaning by Victor Frankel, Beacon Press, 2006, as a textbook for the high school psychology course. So moved. By Deidre. Second. By Lisa. Any discussion? All those in favor? That's unanimous. That motion passes. We have a motion upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools to approve the list of additional emergency conditional substitute non-instructional staff for the 2015-16 school year. So moved. By Deirdre. Second. By Lisa. Discussion. All those in favor? That's unanimous. That motion passes. We have a motion upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools to approve a leave request under the Family and Medical Leave Act from Patricia, Patricia Daneman to commence on or about September 1st, 2016, with such leave to be taken as paid medical leave through the period of disability as certified by a physician in writing to the extent of her accrued sick leave and thereafter such leave to be taken as unpaid child care leave through t September 2017. So moved. By Deirdre. Second. By Lisa. Any discussion? All those in favor? That's unanimous. That motion passes. We have a motion upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools to accept a donation from the Rhinebeck PTSO in the amount of $2,423.74 as stipulated. So moved. By Deirdre. Second. By Lisa. Any discussion? Once again, we thank the uh, Rhinebeck PTSO for all their support. All those in favor? That's unanimous. That motion passes. We have a motion to move into executive session for the purpose of the discussion of a particular vendor. So moved. And also uh, and negotiations. And salary and negotiations. Mm -hmm. Second. All those in favor? That's unanimous. That motion passes. We're moving into executive session.